Hebrews chapter 10, verse number 30. While we're turning there, I'll say this. There's a lot of different areas of faith that we must uh, recognize beyond just some of the areas we're so accustomed to. Um, there's, a, there's a, well, go back before we go to Hebrews. Go back to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And let's look at some of the benefits. Remember, there's, a, there's some benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that's within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. We certainly uh, focus in on a couple of them sometimes, and, uh, and uh, that, rightly so. But let's read verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all uh, within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all thine iniquities, that's a benefit. Who heals all thy diseases, that's a benefit. Say all. Who redeems thy life from destruction. That could be accidents, things like that. Who, uh, and uh, tornadoes and uh, hurricanes and straight winds, hail. We've got some wonderful testimonies. We've had some hail. What was that, about a month and something ago? And uh, <laughs> insurance companies throwing money at people, you know. I mean, I just, it's just been amazing. Beyond even what they normally do. Oh, it chipped your driveway? We'll give you a whole new driveway, you know. It's like, who redeems our life from destruction. I was talking to one person in the congregation. They're $70,000 ahead. And they didn't threaten them, you know, to, to do anything. They just, the, the insurance company just kept throwing it at them. Who redeems thy life from destruction. Hallelujah. Anybody had any destruction going on? Well, there's a redemption. Redemption covers that. And crowns thy, uh, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. I like that, don't you? Now look at verse, verse 5. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. Ooh, so your youth is renewed like the eagles. How many of you believe in growing old gracefully? Pastor Debbie and I, we go, we go, sometimes we'll be driving or doing something. We see an old couple walking down. They're, they're 85 years old. They're, they're taking a good walk, you know, and uh, they're holding hands and loving on each other, and they got strength, and they're able to get out and walk like that. We look at them and say, that's what we're going to be like at 85. We're going to have our youth renewed like the eagles. Then verse 6, who, the Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Hallelujah. Verse 7, he makes ways, has known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of men, so forth and so on. I want to focus in on that verse, he ex verse 6. He executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. We've got to understand the God, that, that God in heaven is a just God. And he... He hates, according to the sixth chapter of Proverbs, you remember the six things the Lord, hate, the Lord hates, even seven that are an abomination to him, and he goes through a list of things, a proud look, a lying tongue, you know, he that sheds innocent blood, you remember that? And then one of them is false, uh, I don't know if I can quote it right off, uh, uh, false witnesses, I believe he said, let me back, back sure here, make sure I'm saying it right, Proverbs chapter number six, verse, uh, let me get it. Verse starts in verse 16. These six things the Lord hates, an abomination unto him are seven. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that swift to run to mischief, false witness that speaks lies, and he that sows discord among the brethren. We were talking about discord, sowing discord the other Sunday. But here he says one of them is a false witness that speaks lies. And another one that falls into the category of injustice is up there, he that, uh, uh, a lying tongue, he mentioned that again, but then he that sheds innocent blood, or hands that shed innocent blood. All those are injustices, things that are not right. <clears throat> and he said he hates those things. And this verse in Psalm 103 says he ministers judgment and righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. In other words, the fact that he brought up righteousness there means this is something that is done not, that's not right. 
you follow me? Righteous judgment. Whenever things are not set right by the legal courts and the legal system of our nation, hello, there's a higher court you and I can go to. Amen. And it's a faith issue to go to that court. We've got to learn to do that. I want to talk about, really this morning, I want to talk about the vengeance and the, and the recompense of the Lord this morning. And uh, we find from the Bible over and over again that uh, like Psalm 61, verse number, I'm sorry, Isaiah 61, verse number 8, God loves justice. You read in Psalm 89, verse 14, that the, the foundation, the King James says habitation, you look it up, it's foundation of the throne of God is justice. Amen. Say justice. In other words, he hates wrongs. He hates when things are done wrong. Injustices. The Bible said he hates that. And uh, so the, the, the very foundation of the Lord's throne is justice. And judgment, if you look it up, it's justice. In other words, if that's the foundation of his throne, that's the basis of how he operates in everything. The Bible calls God the righteous judge of all the earth. Is that, is that in your Bible? Not just once or twice. That's in there over and over and over again. He's the Old and New Testament. He's the righteous judge of all the earth. Now, you read with me. If you go over to... Uh, uh, Psalm 103, we just read Psalm 103, verse number 6. He said, uh, he, one of his benefits is he ministers righteousness and judgment to all that are oppressed. Now, all those other benefits in that passage work by faith. Remember, he forgives all that iniquities. He heals all that diseases. Those things all work by faith. So does this. So does the, the righteous, the vengeance and the recompense of the Lord. All right? Are you still with me? In other words, this is an area that we must use our faith in. Now, we find an example of this in 1 Peter 2. We're going to go kind of quickly, if that's all right with you, to lay a foundation here. It says this in 1 Peter 2, talking about Jesus. And by the way, it says here that in verse 21, he's an example for us in this. And we're to follow this example. Verse 22, when he, this is uh, 1 Peter 2, 22, when he did, uh, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. What's the context? The context is him being judged at Pilate's judgment hall and false witnesses were brought in. You remember that? The Bible talked about they brought in false witnesses that said, he said this, he's going to tear down the temple and re rebuild it in three days and all these things. And, uh, and so whenever he was uh, falsely accused, there wasn't any guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Look at that. When he suffered. There are things that you and I as Christians will suffer. Not sickness and disease. The next verse said he bore those for us. There are things that Jesus suffered for us as, as a substitute. And there are things that he suffered as an example for us to follow. The things he suffered for us, such as the redemption from our sicknesses and poverty and the curse and a tormented mind, we don't have to suffer what he bore for us because his suffering was substitutional. He was taking our place so that we could be healed. We could have uh, redemption from those things. There are, there's two kinds of suffering mentioned in the Bible. But then there's a kind of suffering for righteousness sake. There's a kind of suffering of injustices sometimes that are done uh, against uh, us, whether it's because of we're believers, whether it's because we're a minority, whether it's because uh, people don't like us. Um, uh, you know, how many of you know more and more our culture has become uh, against God? They're anti-Christian. They're anti-righteousness, anti... Uh, uh, in fact, the more and more, the, uh, the courts are becoming more politicized. And you just have to get, you just, I mean, I believe in, in doing all we can to get the right justices and right judges in places, but you have to realize that all through history, there were groups of people that were not favored in nations, and to go to the courts was almost futile, because it was against, it was against what was popular in that culture. Well, what are we going to do? We're going to have to appeal to, a high, we're going to have to learn to trust God and use our faith. Do you realize even Christians more and more are being persecuted even in this nation? 
That's the truth. And uh, there are situations where you can't go to the court for, especially certain jurisdictions, because it's all slanted for an agenda. That's just, I mean, there's no longer about, it's no longer about what the law says and what is right and what is wrong. Even as far as humans, just being, just being good and right to humans, just because they're human beings. It's no longer about that in some situations. It's more about agendas. Amen. And uh, so we've got, God, the Bible said God hates that. If you look over in the Old Testament, a judge had to be completely impartial or he was not qualified to be a judge. He wasn't to be partial because of, uh, of, of, uh, you know, his favorite uh, pet peeve or his favorite, you know, I've heard heard judges talk about uh, whenever they were being, uh, you know, proven to whether they could be to a higher court, you know. I've heard them talk about, I've had, to, and, and in case studies have proven it, I've had to, even against things that were my own conviction, I've had to pass sentence against it because of what the laws said on the books. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, that's somebody you can trust. That's right. yeah. Are you there? You're going home. And if it's not the right law, the law needs to change. Yeah. You realize, but if it is, if it is uh, righteousness and he doesn't like it and he sides against it because he doesn't like it, then he's an unjust judge. Unjust. Amen. Well, I don't like Christians or I don't like this group or that group or something like that. That doesn't, that doesn't matter, buddy. What matters is what's right. (laughs) What's right. And there are some things that that are, are not morally right. So uh, the, the Bible calls God, in fact, you'll go over here to, uh, you, you read that, well, let's stand First Peter here. Look what it says in verse number 22. It says, verse 23, excuse me, who when he was reviled, he reviled not again, but when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. So he suffered injustices, but he didn't revile and, and fight and... <clears throat> You know, call an army of 10,000 angels, which he said he could have done. He didn't call for Peter, get the swords, come in here. Peter got the sword and tried to cut a man's ear off. And and Jesus said, no, put up your sword. They that live by the sword, die by the sword. And he healed the man's ear. And man that's arresting him on false charges, he healed his ear. Whoa. Whoa. What was he doing? Well, he knew that he was going to have to die for the sin of the whole world, and he wasn't going to fight that. But the point is, this is saying, if you read verse 21 in this passage, 1 Peter 2, 21, it's saying this is an example for us. Uh, this is an example. When we're done injustice, when, when injustice is done to us, now, I don't, I'm not saying don't go to the courts. I'm just simply saying you got to watch the spirit which gets a hold of you. You have to watch the spirits. You can go to the courts with a, with, with a right spirit, or you can go to the courts with a wrong spirit. Now, somebody said, is it okay to go to courts? Well, the Bible only says don't do it against a brother. I mean, how many of you know the church ought to be able to work things out? But when it comes to the world and sinners who have an agenda, get her done. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? The church ought to live by, how to stand, live by the law of love and do to his brother the way he wants to be done unto him. The church ought to be able to live all above all this need for the court. But when it comes to the world, I have no problem going to the court. And, and if you have to, sue the bejeebies out of them. Nail them. Stand up for your right. But you got to watch. You got to watch getting a wrong spirit about that. You can, you can try to destroy somebody's life, and God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. You can, get, you can get protection 
and maybe recompensation of some things through the courts. But you got to judge. You got to watch. Be be careful about depending on that yeah. rather than do what Jesus did here, where he said when he was done wrong. Look what it said. He committed himself to him that judges righteously. In other words, for him, there was no justice in the courts. It was all slanted against him. The high priest wanted him out of the way, and it was all slanted against him. You understand? And that's an injustice. Now, we know God was laying on him our sins, our iniquities, and so forth and so on. But as far as the legal system of that day, you have to understand it was an injustice. And so what did Jesus do? He said, I'm going to appeal to a higher court. I'm going to go to the throne of God. And I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, and, and how many of you know, because he did, God raised him from the dead and all those who crucified him will stand before him and bow the knee. Acknowledging he's Lord of all. Woo, now, how did that get turned around, honey? You know, God will do that for you. If you'll appeal to the high court of heaven and trust him, he'll turn it around and he'll make it to where you own everything they got. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But it won't be you getting it out of vengeance. Vengeance. See, there's a difference between. In fact, let's go over here to uh, Hebrews chapter number 10. Let's go to Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 30. Look at what it says in Hebrews 10, verse number 30. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongs unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. Vengeance belongs unto me. Now, notice he didn't say revenge. Revenge is fleshly. Vengeance is of the Spirit. Vengeance is not getting even. Can we spend some time on this? Vengeance is not a hate. Notice he said, vengeance is mine. God's saying, I'll take care of this situation. I'll take care of the injustice that's been done. Don't you get into retaliations. This is what faith people do. I said, this is an area of faith that we've got to learn to exercise our faith in. Anybody had anything done wrong? There are many injustices. The Bible said there are, there are, are uh, you know, you can't go through this life. It's impossible, but that offenses are going to come. Think wrongs are going to happen because we live in a fallen world. And uh, be honest with you, Satan, uh, he puts his crosshairs on Christians. And uh, the thing he's saying here is, vengeance is mine. And then he said, I will recompense, saith the Lord. I will recompense. So notice, two things, vengeance, we need to understand two things, vengeance, and number two, recompense. Yeah. Yeah. Can we spend some time on it before we go? Now, notice it says vengeance. This is not revenge. This is not hate. It's not something that you and I do. It's something that God does to punish offenders. And it proceeds not out of hate, but it proceeds from a love of justice. And God loves justice. I said he loves justice. And it proceeds from the necessity of punishing offenders. There is a law in the earth already set in motion called the law of sin and death. And it catches up to people. It catches up to cities. It catches up to nations. It catches up to the whole world sometimes. I mean, like, for example, what do you mean the whole world? How about whenever the Noah's flood came? The Bible said the world was full of violence. The world was full of iniquity. And it caught up. The law of sin and death. The sowing and reaping. That's what it is. Be not deceived. Whatever man sows, that's what he will reap. That's what he will reap. That's what he will read. It's a law God put in the earth. And the reason it's in the earth is to, so that sin hits a wall and doesn't just take over down here. You understand what I'm talking about? When things are not right, eventually that catches up to people. And you can trust God in that. In fact, we're called to trust God in that. Are you still with me? So, what is vengeance? Let's define vengeance. It's not an emotional retaliation 
to a situation that's been done against us. Anybody know what I mean by emotional retaliation? It's not a, uh, it is not, it is not, uh, re- really, revenge is us taking things into our own hands. Revenge is a low life. Are you with me? It's not the high life. It's taking the low road. It's tit for tat. It's eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You do this, I'll do that. You talk about me, I'll talk about you. You know what I'm talking about? That's revenge. That's the fleshly nature. That's the low life. We're called to live a higher life than that. I, 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 I praise God. So revenge is not an emotional retaliation. Revenge, I mean, excuse me, vengeance, excuse me, uh, is not an emotional retaliation. God is not emotional and says, I'm mad about you doing that. Vengeance is the justice system of God. Are you with me? Hold on and we're going to get to some things. It's the justice system of God. The Bible says, pray for those that despitefully use you and persecute you. Isn't that right? And so uh, the, the point here is vengeance is mine. Now go over to the 12th chapter of the book of Romans. We'll see another verse that's very similar to this. Now, I, I've been running into people more and more that are having more trouble in this, and that's why the Lord put it on my heart to talk about it. We've got to be faith people all over and not just one area. If we're going to be faith people, let's be faith people. Let's, let's go ahead and shuck the whole, let's eat the whole roll. You know what I'm talking about? Let's, let's believe God in every area. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. This is another area of faith. Honestly, it's one that many people struggle with. And, and, and we could understand because the flesh and, and the nature of the flesh wants to get even. You know what I'm talking about? But look at what it says here, Romans 12, verse number 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. In other words, they did me wrong, I'll do them wrong. Then he said, provide things honest in the sight of all men. And if it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. But rather give place unto wrath, that's the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Do you believe that? I will repay. There's two things in this verse again, vengeance and a repayment. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Then verse 20, therefore, if your enemy hunger, enemy, not your friend, if your enemy is hungry, kick him when he's down. No, that's not our way. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you'll heap coals of fire on his head. Boy, that's the truth. Anybody ever had, anybody ever had, anybody, anybody in here ever done something wrong to somebody and you knew you did, and they did something in return to you that was loving and kind and wasn't equal to what you doled out to them? Boy, it convicts you. Learn that in marriage. It's great. It works. It's the best way to win any fight. I'm telling you, just. That's the Bible. The Bible said, let me show you a more excellent way. Talking about the love walk. Amen. We're called to live this way. And smile while we're doing it. You know why? Because we're not looking to them to get, we're not looking to them to give back what they took from us, whether it be our reputation, whether it be our rights or something like that. You know, the, the Bible said about love, we haven't dared even, we haven't, we haven't even hardly, we haven't even hardly breached the love walk yet. The Bible said love doesn't demand its own rights or its own way. Oh my goodness. Dear Jesus, we got to crawl into the pews now. How far below faith we have been. Well, don't I have some rights? Yeah, go to the Father with them. And if you need to, with the sinners, go to the courts. But you got to watch this vengeance thing. How many of you know you can just you can just get the protection, or you can take their you can take everything they've got with a spirit of 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 destroying them because they destroyed me. So I'm I'm going to destroy them. 
I'm going to take everything they got. Their babies aren't going to have anything to eat. I'm going to get, I'm going to get every paycheck they make for the next 10 years. I'm going to make them miserable. I'm going to get, well, see, now you got, you're, now vengeance is yours. And, and, and you've taken it out of the hands of God. Do you know why we, you know why we are not, uh, that we can't get vengeance? We don't qualify to make those decisions. Only the righteous judge of all the earth. Now, he knows everything. He knows things we don't know. There are things people do just as a uh, puppet of the devil. Amen. We ought, to go, we ought to go after the one behind them. The one that's motivating them. Come on now. Rather than fighting flesh and blood. Flesh and blood's not your trouble. I said flesh and blood's not your trouble. Your trouble, see, those flesh and blood, they're just puppets being tr- controlled by the puppet master. Why don't you go after the puppet master? And take him to the throne of grace and to the God who is the God of vengeance and recompense. And make him pay. Make the real thief pay. Proverbs says when a thief is found, he's got to repay sevenfold and, and you can take all his house. Well, who's that? The devil. He's the thief. Let's rise above flesh and blood fighting. Let's get up to where we walk in the Spirit and recognize who's behind these things. Amen. Take him to the high court of heaven. And I'll guarantee you God will wrap the gavel in your favor. Well, it's awfully quiet in this Presbyterian church. Recompense, look at verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not, we're here in Romans 12. Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Yeah. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. And so doing, he calls a fire on his head. For be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Overcome evil with good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> When are we going to be word people? Let's be word people. Let's, let's, let's not be favorite scripture people. Let's be the word, whether it's, whether it's something our flesh likes or something our flesh doesn't like. Be not overcome of evil. What does that mean? When somebody has done us evil and an injustice has been done, that, that overcomes us and we, re- from the passage from the scriptures right before that, we retaliate and get even on that. Yeah. Yeah. Now we've just come down to the low life that they are, yeah. the low level that they are. Yeah. Now we're no better than them right. Thank you. Come on. Thank you. because we have gone down into the flesh. Rather than, rather than practice the Bible and trust God. I said practice the Bible and trust God. So you can see these verses, can't you? There's many others. Uh, the, the Bible talks about uh, Hebrews 12, 23. God is the judge of all. Aren't you glad about that? That he's going to handle these situations. Now somebody said, you mean whenever we get to heaven, everything will be made right? Well, go to Proverbs chapter number 11 with me. Go to Proverbs chapter number 11 with me. Proverbs chapter number 11. Look with me at verse number, I believe it's verse 31. Let me check here. Proverbs 11. Yeah. Proverbs 11, verse 31. Behold, the righteous shall be, what's that word? Recompensed. So it's the same thing he's talking about. The righteous shall be recompensed when they go to heaven. Huh? The righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Somebody said, well, nah, there's, there's things that have never been made right yet. I'm still on the earth. Use your faith for it. Use your faith. You can use your faith on that verse right there. The righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. In the earth. Much, much more the wicked and the sinner. So even down here. In other words, God's got to settle up every account before you get out of here or else his word is not true. But you know how it works? It works by faith. I said it works by faith. So we got to be faith people. Has it come to that? (laughs) Hallelujah. We don't exercise vengeance because, uh, let let me put it this way, especially without the anointing. Now, 
there are passages in the Scripture, in the New Testament, like in Acts 13 is one of them, where the Holy Ghost came on Paul. Paul was preaching. He had just uh, had that, uh, they had just come out of that prayer meeting where they prayed in the church that was at Ephesus, uh, certain prophets and teachers such as, and it names them. And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas saw for the work I've called them to. Remember that? And they sent them forth, you know, laid hands on them and sent them forth. They being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, they talks about where they started going, started naming cities. And they got to a certain place and the, uh, I think it was Patmos and the, and the, it said the, uh, I don't remember how it's really governor of the place. They, they, he wanted to hear the word of God. He wanted Paul to come and preach the word of God. This is all in Acts chapter number 13. And, then, and so Paul went there to preach, and there was a certain uh, false prophet, it said, named Bar-Jesus, that withstood him, withstood Paul preaching the gospel to this man. Because this man was prudent, the Bible said, and he wanted to hear what the word said. He wanted to hear the truth. And so Paul's preaching the gospel there. And this man, this false prophet, Bar-Jesus is his name, he stood up and he's opposing them, seeking to turn the deputy away from the faith. Remember that? And Paul, the Bible said in uh, that passage, it said, Paul filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, we got to go look at it. Go look at it. Go to Acts chapter number 13. I want to hurry sometimes, and I, but it, sometimes it's important that that we actually see it. Then notice uh, verse number 7. The deputy of the country, Sergius Paul, is a prudent man, called for Barnabas and Paul that, to desire to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the sorcerer, for so was his name by interpretation. Up, up earlier it said Bar-Jesus in verse number 6. There's another name, Bar, uh, Elimus, the sorcerer, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. Notice the anointing came on him, set his eyes on him, and said, O fool of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all right. Boy, he waxed bold, didn't he? Yeah. Thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right way of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. He went about seeking someone to lead him by the hand. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Now, notice Paul didn't just do that out of anger or out of hate. The anointing came on him. Listen, throughout our history here in the United States, we've had men rise up, anointed of God, to say certain things and change some things. But, but the ones that God used, you notice they always said, now we're not going to retaliate whenever they do us wrong. They said we're going to love them. We're going to win this fight by love because there were injustices being done. Amen. I'm talking about the civil rights movement. Hello? And so, uh, but the Holy Ghost, you can't do these things in the flesh. You can say, well, by bless God, I'm mad at you. You know, you cut me off in t- traffic. I turn you over to Satan for the destruction of your flesh. <laughs> A lot of that's just fleshly irritation. Doesn't have anything to do with the Holy Ghost. Doesn't have anything to do with the anointing. It has something to do with flesh. And us wanting God to strike them down dead. You know what I'm talking about? And their car blows up and rolls off to the edge, falls off a cliff, and they die. And we say, praise the Lord. I mean, that's just flesh. That's what I'm talking about. Your flesh is like mine, right? But we, we don't, that's not our flow. Hallelujah. Now, will God deal with them? You can trust him to do it. You can trust him to do it. I said that's what these verses are talking about, being able to trust him to do it. Because we're told not to hold any unforgiveness against anybody. Aren't we? Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They're here crucifying the Son of God. And he said, Father, forgive them. That's, uh, he's setting an example for us. But he also said in 1 Peter, that he, it says in 1 Peter, that he appealed his case to the high court of heaven. Amen. And he let God work it out. And God did it in grand style. 
Because before this thing's over, he's kicking devils and splattering them against the wall, raising from the dead and coming out of there, having the keys of death and of hell and all authority to tre- gave it to us to tread on serpent and scorpions and overall. What used to lord it over us now is under our feet. Woo! God turned that one around, didn't he? And he'll do it for us. This is a faith thing. We got to learn to use our faith for this. Praise God. And so Jesus didn't attack the people that did it. He knew the devil was behind it. And when you take the devil to the court of heaven, you'll destroy his house. The Bible said when a strong man armed, uh, uh, is armed, keeps his palace. But whenever uh, stronger than he comes upon him, he taketh his armor and spoileth his goods. That means takes everything he's got. Let's take everything the devil took from us. What do you say? Let's, 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 let's go after the puppet master, not the, the puppets. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. This is the way the kingdom rolls. Amen. And uh, these things, we've got to understand, in in so many situations in life, wrongs are done. And I'll be honest with you, what's happening in the streets of our nation today is that people are killing policemen because they don't feel like there's any justice in the system for them. Amen. Amen. But we've got to tell them and and help them. And listen, we've got to be an example to them about this. We've got to help them to see that whenever there is not justice, whether it's real or perceived, I'm convinced there's realities. I'm convinced some things are perceived. Some things are reality. Some things are just they think that there's a reality. So I'm not saying there's not some, there's, there's cases just injustices are being done. But what we've got to learn to do is show people and illustrate to people that if, if they would understand this, because we show it to them, that the high court of heaven will take their case if they'll plead their case to the high court of heaven. You understand what I'm talking about? Because the very throne God sits on, the foundation under it is justice. In other words, writing things that are wrong. He hates injustices. Amen? And we've got to train people. And if the body of Christ doesn't show the example, who's going to show the example of this? We've got to train people that he will bring vengeance and he will repay. In other words, what has been taken from you, God will repay it to you. God will repay it. Even if a man says no, God will repay it. And God can turn it around to where that very man is the one paying it to you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 If you want to get things cut off and you want to get things stopped that are wrong in your life, learn to trust God in the area of His vengeance and His recompense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, He'll pay you even better than you can get in court. And you understand, I'm not saying sometimes it's, 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 it's okay. I'm, I'm saying you should go to court sometimes, but not against a brother, the Bible says. Everybody still with me? I said, he'll pay you better than you could get anywhere else. He'll pay you better. Listen, the Egyptians were treated wrong for 430 years, and they came out of that nation with all that nation's wealth. From then on, Egypt was decimated. I said it was decimated. That's the God of vengeance and recompense. And he said, I'm going to give you all their silver. You go borrow their gold and borrow their silver and borrow their earrings and borrow everything. And then I'm going to take you out of there with silver and gold. There won't be one feeble one. That's recompense. That's payoff. That's 400 years of payment for what was done wrong. Hallelujah. But they didn't have to lift the sword. Did they? They just trusted God. And things started happening. Woo, turned that situation around. How many of you know Daniel had an injustice done to him? Laws were changed about who you could pray to just to catch him. It wasn't because it was a righteous law. It was a, it was a trap. It was, it was something that was an injustice against a man who wouldn't compromise. And so the laws were changed. So what did he do? He went up, opened his window, prayed like normal, right out where everybody could see him. And they went, aha, we caught him. And they put him in the, remember, they put him in the lion's den. But God, the God of vengeance and recompense, 
solve that situation. What was, what was done against him unjustly turned, and the very guys that put him in there got eaten by the lions. That's a man of faith. Daniel trusted God. And he wasn't mad at the king because the king, you remember whenever the king came in the morning, he said, oh, Daniel, you know, it, was your God able to deliver you? And he said, uh, long live the king. That was what he said. Long live the king. In other words, he's not mad at the king. Lord, I, I mean, king, I want you to live long. I'm not mad at you. See, he didn't have to take it out against flesh and blood. He trusted God and God turned that thing around. And the very people that threw him in there, the king said, throw them in there. And it wasn't because the lions weren't hungry, because the Bible said they didn't even hit the bottom and the lions got them. Daniel walked out in charge and probably took all their positions in the government. <laughs> Woo! Same thing happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I sure wish I had a church I could preach to this morning. It was a wrong, it was an injustice. You know, setting up an idol and saying, if you don't worship this idol, you're going to get thrown into the fire. And so they refused to, like somebody said, they, because they wouldn't bow, they wouldn't burn. <clears throat> See, you don't have to compromise. You don't have to act like the world and conform to the world to get what you really need and what, what you really have a right to in this life. <clears throat> they wouldn't compromise. And so the king said, I'm going to give you another chance. And they said, well, you can, you can do whatever you want, but we're not bound down to your idol. He made the fire seven times hotter, was it? And he said, all right, I'm going to get them real scared. And they said, we're not bowing. So the king said, in the, in, throw them in. And they threw them in. And, and uh, the guys that threw them in got burned up. And the king looks in there and he said, I thought we put three in there. There's four in there. Woo, who showed up? The God of vengeance and recompense. He, he paid it out. What was, what was unjust, God took care of the bill, paid it out, and restored it to them. And in other words, it was an injustice trying to take their life. And God said, you can't take their life. I'm the God of vengeance and recompense. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Let's be faith people. What do you say? We can trust God whenever it looks like there's nowhere else to go. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. You don't have to depend on the justice system of this world. Use it if you need to. But you can go to the high court of heaven. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. So uh, let's, let's wrap this up by saying, let's, let's talk about the recompense a little bit. How many of you know if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. One of the, let, let, me, let me say this. You remember the story in Luke 18 of the unjust judge? who said, this woman keeps coming and she's bothering me and I'm not going to do anything because I don't fear God or regard man. In other words, he didn't care about people. God, see, God cares about people. But this man was an unjust judge. And he's not a type of God. God is the righteous judge of all the earth. But this woman, she came, really, if you think about it, she's calling for justice. She said, avenge me of mine adversaries. Now, I don't know what it was. It didn't say, but her, some sort of harassment, some sort of, you know, abuse, some sort of something wasn't taking, something was being done wrong against her. Yeah. And she said, avenge me of my adversaries. And this unjust judge wouldn't do it because he wasn't a godly man. But the thing that Jesus is saying here is, because eventually the unjust judge turned and, and did the right thing, but it wasn't because he loved her, you remember. He said, because this widow woman keeps coming and she continually wearies me. In other words, I, I just to, just to keep, get people that bother me away from me. It wasn't because he loved her. Right. How many of you know God does things because he loves us? Yeah. He takes care of us. But, but this man is an unjust judge. And the Bible said, or Jesus said in the parable, he said, I, I will, the, the man in the parable said, I will avenge her of her adversary lest she keeps bothering me. And so what's happening here is Jesus is talking about the unjust systems of the world sometimes. You know, we, we strive to have things better and better, and, and, and this isn't good English, but more and more right. Yeah. I mean, that's a continual yeah. struggle in every nation. Yeah. Yeah. And it ought to be. It ought to be. Continually, we're looking at things be more just yeah. Yeah. Right. and more fair for everybody. 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 <coughs> Amen. 
But this is a representation of the unjust systems of the world. And what we're seeing here is that the justice systems of the world are a main target of demonic abuse. Do you realize that in our world right now, the justice system of our nation, this nation right here, it is right now a target to try to, to, try to change it. Because it has been the standard of the world. No, not everything's been perfect. We've had to get some things right. But, but it has been the standard of the world. You go anywhere else, and there's not near the rights that Americans have. But listen, this system that we're living under right now, this justice system, I mean uh, the, the, le the legal system, it is under demonic attack <clears throat> to where there, there, there's, there's uh, it shouldn't be that because one political party puts one in, that he has this slant, and another political party puts one in, he has this slant. It should not matter because it should be about the law only and not our slant. What is right according to the Constitution, and the Constitution ought to resemble the Bible, of what the Bible says is right and what's wrong. I mean, you know, no wonder we've got the, the we've got Moses in on, on the. They're trying to take this away now too, but take Moses. They, we've got Moses inscribed on the in the Supreme Court, and the Ten him holding the Ten Commandments and stuff. That's because that's the basis of all of, any just legal system in the world. And uh, but see, that's trying to be taken. No wonder they hate it. They hate the they hate the uh, the justice of the the uh, Ten Commandments, but. We're going to stand for it. Amen. Amen. And so the justice system is a target of demonic abuse. This woman comes, comes and said, uh, avenge me of mine adversary. She's calling for justice. But when God hears avenge, he not only hears stop the attack, stop the harassment, but he hears uh, somebody's going to have to pay the damages. Somebody's going to have to pay the damages. Amen. And uh, somebody said, well, yeah, this person, that person. Well, listen, fine, but really the devil is who really is your thief. Amen. You deal with the force behind it and use the legal system if you need to, but let God work out the forces of, and deal with the forces of darkness as you exercise authority and trust God. Am I making any sense? Proverbs 6.30, if a thief is found, he's got to restore sevenfold. The devil is the thief. Amen. So, uh, you and I shouldn't be making threats against people. I'm going to take everything you have. Watch your back because I'm coming for you tonight at 10 o'clock. <laughs> people do stuff like that. Make threats and they hide. They do it on social media now and be hide behind their social media posts. Coward, come out in the... Come out in the street with your six gun. Come on now. You don't want to. You don't want to face up. You're scared. See, scaredy cats hide behind social social media pages. Well, I said it. Hallelujah. So, uh, really, to be honest with you, to wrap this up, God is saying He will recompense. That means restore what has been stolen equal to what has been taken, and, and bring it back, and even multiplied. Because you have verses that say, uh, over in Isaiah 61, he said, I'll give you double for all that's been taken from you. Somebody said, double for your trouble. Here, he said, sevenfold. Can you trust God? He'll do it for you. Can you, can you say Amen. We're called to demonstrate this. We, have, we live in a world that needs to see people trust God. They need to see us going to the higher court of heaven. Amen. Dealing with the forces that are behind all this rather than just fighting flesh and blood. This, th listen, we live, in the we live in a different kingdom. We live in the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God has a culture. The culture of the kingdom of God is justice. Amen. Hallelujah. It's one of the main channels through which the economy of heaven comes to the earth. You know as well as I do that where there is less justice, 
where rights are not, I mean, uh, where rights, where, where uh, wrongs are not righted in legal systems of nations of the world, where people's right, maybe, maybe one group, how many of you know in the Nazis, for example, they considered all Jews subhuman, yeah. so they didn't consider them having any rights. Right. 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 What was it that they were destroyed? Come on. Right. Come on. Judgment. Yeah. The judgment of God. That's right. Amen. Because that's, yeah. that's an unjust system. Yeah. And it needed to be destroyed. So, but we live in a culture that needs to see us believing God and taking these things to the high court of heaven and trusting God to get these things made right. Do you believe God can make it up to you? God, God can do it. What we were talking about in James 5 in the offering, that's recompense. Can you see it now? That's payback. That's payback. And so, praise God. Did you get anything out of the Word this morning? Yes. Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm, the Bible says. The Bible says no weapon formed against us will prosper. Isn't that right? And so we can take these verses to the Lord and say, Look, this is not right, but I'm taking this to you and saying this will not prosper. I'm standing on your Word, and God will turn it around for us. Yes. Somebody touches us, they're going to have to pay for it, but it's not going to be us, you know, you know, uh, you know take, taking it into our own hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Say the righteous will be recompensed in the earth. Does that mean right now? That, that's not, we have to wait to go to heaven? Oh yeah, there's a, good, there's a lot of good things in heaven. Don't misunderstand me. But God said he would do it right here in this earth. Hallelujah. You need to go after the recompense of God. Go after the vengeance of God. And, and because we've not learned to do this, because we've been passive in so many things. Now, now there's, a, there's a passiveness of faith is what I'm talking about. Because we've been passive in faith and maybe even use it, getting in the flesh rather than walking by faith, we've been victims when we should not have had to be victims. God has not called His people to be victims to the wicked men of this, this world. Can you say amen? God has called us to rule and to reign. <laughs> Glory. Praise the Lord. And so heaven's monitoring and keeping record according to these verses. Because there's no such thing as injustices with God. It's heaven's monitoring and keeping record of injustices against you since you've been born again. Amen. Everything that's been embezzled, everything's been stolen, everything's been extorted, everything you've been defrauded of, been exploited out of, scammed out of, robbed from you, anything that's resisting you, anything that you lost, God is saying, I will repay it to you if you believe me in this earth before you're out of here. If you'll trust me, the God of vengeance and recompense. Glory. There's a payday coming for every person who walks by faith. And there's a payday coming for every injustice. The last, the, one of the last verses in Ecclesiastes said so. Hallelujah. There's a payday coming. Say to your neighbor, there's a payday coming. Praise the Lord. That's really what Jesus came preaching the year of Jubilee. Hallelujah. So for your shame, Isaiah 61, verse 7, you'll have double. You need to claim that. Hallelujah. When God said, you're going to go out of Egypt, he told the children of Israel, you're going to go out of Egypt. He said, you're not going out empty. Listen, I'm not going out of this world empty. When I go to be with Jesus, I will have gotten everything that, that, that rightfully belonged to me for the fulfillment of what God's called me to do. Hallelujah. I'm a faith man. Tell your neighbor, I'm a faith man too. So I'm going to stand for this. Hallelujah. They went into Egypt, became slaves, but they came out owning everything. Woo, God can turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. And He will if you'll believe Him for it. Amen. There's been, I, I'm, I'm, yep, thank you, Father. There's been people that have not been in, in divorce settlements. They've not been paid what they were supposed to be paid. Anybody in here like that? The, in child alimony, things that have not been paid that should have been paid. And you raised the children, but you did it without hardly anything because somebody wasn't paying their part. Tell me I'm preaching all right. Somebody says, what does God see about that? He sees that that is due to you. He sees it belongs to you. 
and he wants you to trust him. Somebody said, well, I tried to get the course, and the course can't do anything. Well, you're going to have to take it to a higher court. Take it to a higher court. Isn't that good news? We can live this life without being victims to everybody. Tell your neighbor, I'm not a victim. I'm not called to be a victim. Not called to be a victim. See, love does not mean we go through this life a victim of everything wicked men want to do to us. Because we serve the God of vengeance and recompense. Hallelujah. No, we're not the one going to enforce it, but we're going to enforce it by going to the throne of grace. We're going to enforce it by going to heaven, going to the higher court. 